have our wheel with the tire on and pumped up and it's in our truing stand with the nuts just done up hand tight. What I want to do now is show you how all the electrics goes together. So here on the bench we have all the components that make your electric bike actually work. We've got the battery. That's a 10 amp hour, 36 volt, lithium ion phosphate battery. It's a generic battery from Green Bike Kit, but it's made of headway lithium ion phosphate cells, cylindrical cells that bolt together inside. I'll show you some of them later. But they're, I've found them to be really good quality batteries. Here's the, the brushless controller that's suitable for these BPM motors. This is quite large. It's, it's twice the size of the controller for a 250 watt motor. Um, this is still a 36 volt motor um, controller. It only goes up to about 17 amps. Now you can see there's a whole ragged head full of um, cables coming out of that, most of which you won't use. The key, I'll show you the key ones very shortly. Now, I also buy from Green Bike Kit these connectors. These connectors have the spade connectors at one end that connect onto the controller, and the Anderson plugs on the other, other end that connect onto the battery. So, I used to have to make them up myself, and it's great being able to just buy them very cheaply from Green Bike Kit. The last thing you need is the twist throttle. I, I really prefer the half twist grip throttles. They also come with a hand grip that goes on there and keeps everything together. I've got a piece of wire to stop this bush from falling out that you need. So that's a very simple thing. Um, inside there there's an, a hall sensor and a magnet that, that creates a varying voltage signal for the controller. Now to put it all together We'll connect, put this connector cable onto the spade, spade connectors. Now in true life, if I was connecting this on a bike, I would use some silicon grease, or if I didn't have that, I'd at least give it a squirt of WD-40 or something onto the copper connectors to reduce the likelihood of corrosion. You really, it's bad connections that cause all sorts of trouble. And because the currents in here are quite high, um, you can get heating up of bad connections and melting of plastic plugs. Now we have the three phase wires. Now what we're going to do, we'll start off by plugging them in colour for colour. Now again if I was doing this live on the bike I would be using silicon grease to protect, to stop corrosion. And more than that I would also be using some screw up um, connectors to really clamp those um, copper connections together. I have had trouble quite often with these connections on a bike with poor connection, high resistance and heating up of the connections and melting the, um, the plastic around them. You don't want that. You can see that's already falling apart. But this is just to show you how it works. We're not going to connect up these um, sensor wires. I generally don't. In the bag of parts that comes with your hub there is a plug and so what if you do want to use them you've got the sensor connection there you can put that in there and then spot the color going into each one find the right color from this side and see the little barb there that holds this in place once it in once it's in the right one so you find that would be yellow that would go in there you'd put that in there and use a little screw very small screwdriver or something to slip that in until it clicks but as I said we're not going to actually use that on this one because I've found that running sensorless works really well and it's a whole lot of trouble once you put that plug on those wires you can't get that through the axle nuts again until unless you go to the trouble of getting that off and that's quite hard to slip the barbs off. 
so um, we'll find the right connector for the throttle there's another connector that's exactly the same as the throttle but you'll find that if you plug onto that it just won't work and we'll plug the Anderson plugs into the battery now we'll give it a try but it's very common that you'll find that the motor will spin backwards inside the hub so over here we'll have a listen to what the hub sounds like when we throttle this because I'm expecting it not to work right so can you hear that there's a you can hear the motor spinning inside the wheel gives a bit of a jerk but it's not spinning no problem all that means is that the motor is spinning the wrong direction some controllers have a little connection that you can use to um, change the direction of the controller but this one doesn't seem to there's the easy the easy solution is just to swap any two of the three phase wires so I'm going to swap the blue and green So I'll plug green into blue and blue into green and now I'm expecting it to go the right way yep. and there it is it's going okay I'll just show you what some of these other connectors that we're not using are now we'll just show you you can hear the speed of that motor now that's full speed normal use that'll take you bright up to 26 kilometers an hour or so and as soon as i let the throttle go it loses power now these two little white connectors on some of the old controllers, the two white or grey connectors like that would be used to change the direction of the spinning of the motor, but that doesn't seem to work with this one. What this does is it's a speed limiter. Now I'll just bring that up to speed again. And you can hear, just from the motor pitch, it's going quite a bit slower. It's really gutless with those connected. I'm not quite sure what you'd use it for, but it might be a way of, um, if you had a high speed setup, you might be able to connect those things up to look like you didn't. Now more useful in normal legal bike use are these two purple connectors. When they plug in, they give you cruise control. Now I'll just start her up again. You can hear it's back up to full speed now with the white ones disconnected. And I'll count, finish counting to 10. It's about 7, 8, 9, 10. And I'll let go of the throttle now. And look, Mum, no hands. It's spinning without any throttle. Now, there's risks to that, of course. Um, the way to stop it is just to give it throttle a flick and that turns off the cruise control but that is a bit counterintuitive to throttle up to slow your bike down um, I have never connected um, brake, brake levers with slowdown switches but one of these plugs is going to be for that so that if you use your brake lever that'll turn off the cruise control as well